Um, before I even get to the game, I just I, I just want to say uh, it's heavy over here today, knowing about Mr. Kessler. Uh, I, I just every time I saw him, he was always so good to me. Him and Henny, like they'd always smile and come and hug me, no matter what was going on. And I, I just told the team, when you're on the board of trust and you hire a new coach, the board of trust guys don't have to be cool to the coach. They're already established. They could treat you any way that they wanted to. And those two always went above and beyond to make me feel welcome here, to make me feel good about what I was doing, and sometimes just to say a kind word. So my heart and my prayers go out to his family. I wish his wife was here just so I could hug her and let her know that it's going to be okay. But we lost a big one at Monmouth today, and, and I was not going to go into my stuff without talking about that family. And we Monmouth basketball truly lost a, a friend of our family today, and we're going to pray for their family. Um, Princeton basketball. Since I was a young fella, you watch Princeton. You watch Coach Carrill beat people time and time again. Um, John Thompson the third was up there. Sidney Johnson, true friend of mine, up there, and I just have so much respect for for their program. When I was a kid, I went to ABCD camp up at Princeton's campus and just thought this was a beautiful place. Then I watched over the years the the great basketball players that came out of there. So we were happy to start this series again. It seems like every time we play, it's an incredible, incredible game. Usually high scoring. Ray hit one last two years ago. Um, the first time we played them here, when Justin and Josh were on the team, it was like 98, 97. We have a picture of it in our locker room. That's like the first thing you see when you walk in. So, and then over the years, Mitch and I have become friends, um, and I think that's why this game is so cool because uh, both of us like to do it. We have respect for each other. I think Mitch is such a good coach. And, you know, Dave, nobody will play them. And that's hard and that stinks when, when people won't play you because you're a good program. So I'm happy we get to do this. Um, obviously, I'm super excited that we beat them this year. I thought, uh, I thought our defense ramped up in the second half. In the first half, they shot 50% from two, 47 from three, and they were just working us. And we talked about it because we were just a half a step slow on everything. We were half a step on our switches, on our traps. And then it, we, we talked more after halftime. And then our defense of talking to each other, communication was so good in the second half, I think that kind of got into their legs. And then they got a little bit tired, and we were able to get away from them. Nikkei caught the flu. Where nobody has COVID, um, Nikkei got the flu, and uh, we couldn't get him the medicine soon enough. And when we went to the school student center, and when you do that, um, you got 24 hours until you have to show them that your temperature is gone. Well, Nikkei didn't cut, hit the the cutoff time. I probably shouldn't be sitting with him because he had it too, but we got him his medicine soon enough, so he was able to to get his temperature down. He came to shoot around today. He did not participate. He he went and put his running shoes on and did a couple moves. I said, you good? He said, yep. I said, okay, he's playing. Um, Miles Ruth uh, caught pink eye. Um, and that's why I kept turning away from him because I don't want that. I don't want that. So he and I were hitting our toes together today so that the pink eye won't get on me. Um, a lot of guys caught the flu this week. Okay, we weren't able to practice with this team coming in here. It was it was going to take all of us really pulling together. But we have super seniors, guys like George, Walker, Marcus, Shavar, even at half strength, and then the real senior, Sam Shapu. Okay, he hasn't been getting many minutes. I apologize to him after the game the other day uh, in, in Philly, and I just said he's worked his behind off to be great, and he's a senior and he deserves to play. And while I was talking, he said, Coach, we got the win. It doesn't even matter. And then my coaches told me the whole time during the game, he was the one cheering the hardest. So when kids do stuff like that, you really pull for them. So he's down. Miles is down. Sam Shapu comes in and runs our team and leads us to victory. 
um, credit to all the kids that we have in this program. And, and Miles Foster really seemed to hold it down. Miles, Miles can really play, guys. I got to do – I got to get him in a little better shape. He's, he's way better shape than last year, and he's a problem. He can score on anybody. But after he scores, we got to get him beneath the ball. <laughs> so he celebrates a little bit, and then he goes into his home run trot, and then Princeton comes down the floor and scores real fast, and he's the young one on the floor, so it has to be his fault. I mean, they're a really good team. They have, they took Minnesota, to, I think, double over time. They beat South Carolina. Uh, they beat one more high major. So the fact that. You know, we rallied and beat them as much as we did. That just shows how good our team is and how together we are. And this is, this is, uh, for sure, top three happiest I've ever been after a win. It was, it was just a battle, and I'm so happy uh, with our guys. Did y'all see when Marcus dunked that one and George lost his mind and like was talking to the president on the side and they threw it up and the kid almost made a three? Okay, yeah, yeah, I was about to see a whole nother side of me tonight. Thanks to George. <laughs> Good thing that one didn't go in. What's your follow up also? Coming off Matt Player of the Week and first team Pistons of all conference. Do you feel you have something extra to prove this season? Uh, for sure. Um, you know, I've just I've just been working my tail off, and you know, when the when the preseason stuff came out, I wasn't shocked. Um, I expect that for myself, but there's a lot of stuff on social media talking about oh, what the heck's Pap is doing up there, and I'm simply just going to show them why I was picked. So that's pretty simple. Shavar, when we spoke in preseason, you talked about if you need to put up or shut up time for you, what's your I think we've been building each day. We, uh, you see each game, we've been weathering adversity. That's what championship, championship teams are made of. Uh, it's about when, like Princeton, when he was, I think he was down 14. Like, you don't, you don't change. We we stay even keel. We stay steady, and we just keep going. That's how championship teams are made. So I think we have been doing very good and just building and progressing each day. We don't, you can't argue with Baker. You can't get down. You have to, you just have to stay even and keep going because, because uh, in that adversity, that's when you really find out what your team is made of. So I think we've been doing very good in that aspect. Shabar, can you talk about the defensive effort in the second you guys seem to really feed off that at the, up, at the offensive end. Um, can you talk about that, that uh, intensity? Well, it seems in the first half we were a little lax. We weren't, we weren't as aggressive as, as we usually were. So in the second half we made it more of an effort to pick up 94 feet, uh, try to push them out more. Don't let them be so comfortable. The first half they were walking it down, getting to their sets. We were letting them back cut us. We were letting them catch the ball at the high post. So in the second half you see that we started threading the screens more. They didn't like that when we started running because before we were switching, we were like giving them more lanes and we were spreading out, and then we just like walk on the island. So we just tightened up a little more and then we could test the shots a little more. Katie put a lot of trust in Toronto Allen tonight. He delivered from what he saw. What do you think that is effort? See, it's, it's my young guys are good, okay? Jaden, Teron, Sam, even Big Ty. They're good players. I just got blessed this year with four super seniors and two seniors. So in normal years, Teron Allen's probably starting as a freshman, maybe Jaden Doyle too. And now this year, you know, we're, we're playing these older guys and they're doing so well. And I know no one believed me when I said, I'm not going to be subbing these guys, these grown men out for these little kids. I'm going to let the grown men decide how we're going to do. And, you know, it's been hard on the kids. But what I tried to do with the young guys is explain to them every day, you guys are good. Okay, you guys are good players. You're going to have great careers here. Please don't do what I did. When I was a freshman, I was a kid that was really confident. Then when I didn't play, I started letting other things get in my life. I was a kid who never drank alcohol. Well, then freshman year when I wasn't playing, you start doing stuff that pulls you away from who you are. And so I'm, I, I pay close attention to that. And I, I just talk to these kids and say, just stay ready. You are going to play this year and be ready when your number's called. What's crazy is we were maybe even talking about redshirting him. 
And I, I just told him, I said, listen, man, you are so close to playing. I don't know if that would have been the best thing for you. Um, and what happens, guys, is it just was going fast for him, for the young guys. And the, the way they think they can impress me is to score because they all scored all the time. But when you come on the team with these guys, you got to be willing to not score and not shoot when you get the ball. Maybe four or five times in a row you get the ball. You have to just give it to the other guys. Well, Teron's a scorer, so when he first got here, he shot it every time he got it. Well, that means he's not ready to get in the game yet. And now he's he was on their team yesterday in practice. He got like eight offensive rebounds, a couple putbacks. When he got the rebounds, he threw it out. George made shots, and it's like, okay, son, I think I think you get it now. So I think he's going to be a kid that scores not quite like he did in high school, but he'll score a lot of points here. And I'm glad that he's going to get to play some because when we don't have these super seniors, he's going to be a guy for us. Five games in, so far you play a shorter rotation than you normally would. That doesn't mean you don't have depth. But what might be different about this group compared to some of the teams in the last couple of years? These guys are grown-ups. Like I, I'm, and I keep saying it, guys, he should be in the pros right now. He should be in the pros right now. Walker should be in the pros right now. And Marcus would be probably on someone's police force. If there wasn't COVID, they would already be gone. He'd be in Greece sending me pictures. He'd be playing somewhere, and, and they and Walker would be playing somewhere, or he'd be working on Wall Street or doing something with his dad's company. Okay, and when you have older guys, well, I'm not gonna be yelling at them and telling them. I'm drawing up stuff and I'm t asking them. If you don't like it, guys, tell me and we'll come up with some new stuff, because they're grown ups. They've seen every situation, and. You know, I'd be a fool not to lean on them. And they're, they're running the locker room. They're running stuff. I get to step back and help them when they need it. So it, it, this has been great so far. Um, and they're leading the young guys. We don't have a lot of bickering. We don't have bad stuff in our locker room like we've had the last couple of years. It's clean. Everybody's pulling in one direction. And, and I think you can see that on the floor. Well, it just, it's everything, you know, and I've told the story when I first talked to him on the phone, we FaceTime. I was super excited and I did the calling on him. Usually the other guys do, but I called him and he answered and we looking at each other and I, I'm like, what's happening, man? What you doing? And his first thing to me was like, coach, I want to lead the country in assists. I said, okay. I said, well, what else? Because I'm waiting for him to tell me he needs the ball in his hands. He needs this many shots because that's what every super senior does especially coming down a, a, a little bit. And then he goes, and then, Coach, I just need someone to, to really believe in me as a coach. And now I, I started thinking somebody put him up to this, because like, that's who I am. I'm going to make you believe in yourself at, on the basketball court, and when you show me you can do it, I'm going to let you rock, and, and you're going to know I got, I'm behind you and I got your back. And then he asked me about Sam Chapoo and Miles Ruth. And he was like, well, how are they going to feel with me coming in as an older dude? And right then I knew I needed this guy on my team. I needed him on my team because of those qualities. And he's been ten times better than, than all the things that he said. Okay? And George is a tough one. You're a new guy coming in. George, George is from Jersey. Y'all know that, right? They don't welcome. Y'all don't welcome that easy around here. You got to prove it to people. Well, George is even welcoming them some welcoming him some, but every once in a while, George says, like, that's not ball so far. And I'm like, uh-oh. All right, but as long as you keep George happy, I'm cool. George keeps him happy, we're going to win a lot of games. Jabbar, how do you feel this, this not experiment per se, but coming here from Seton Hall, how this first month on campus with this group of guys, how's it been going for you? Because you're coming off with 25 points the other night you know, in a win against St. Joe's, and now this big win against another New Jersey rival. Oh, it's been lovely, man. So it's a totally different experience in terms of it's more more personal because I don't even get to play. I don't want to get too in depth, but like, mm -hmm. I just get to I just get to play basketball again. I get to enjoy it. I have a fun again. I just love the group. Everybody wants to get better. There's no egos, no selfishness. I just enjoy it again. There's, there's no no pressure. There's no I don't have to look over my shoulder. I just have fun. That's that's all I really wanted. 
because I think sometimes in all this you can really lose that because you're trying to pursue a dream for so long that you lose, you lose the you know, just to go out there and just play, enjoy the game because you can do it your life. Or you just walk through that stretch through those three threes in a row where that I mean you guys have turned it up on team member already, but that put you guys in front. Just what what you kind of feel in that spot where uh, you started to put the ball in the basket like you did? Uh, I was shooting it, shooting it. Teammates believed in me. That's it. They kept they just kept looking for me. Even George screening for me and all that. George is like, he's screening for me. I'm just the one screening for George. He's like, nah, nah, you come off. I was like, okay. And just shooting. I was like, that, that's another test of Coach Rice. I don't have to. You don't have to worry with him. You don't have to. You don't have to second guess your shots. You can just play. As long as you're giving that same effort defensively, he'll let you play your game and he'll let you do what you show. Like you just said. So that was really just a, a teammates playing hard and finding me. And then Coach Rice allowed me to be myself. Hey, and just so y'all know, that's our AD and Prezzo in the back. Let's go, baby. Yes, let's go. Just so y'all know, they in the back. That's the big bosses over there. And then them two dudes right there, that's the, t the two coolest high school students in the area. You just heard from the head coach, King Rice and Shavar Reynolds. George Papp is going to hang around just a little bit here on our Mammoth Digital Network extended postgame coverage after the Hawks' 76-64 home win over Princeton. Uh, already so much has been discussed, George, and you've already answered you know, questions but from all the media who came, and we appreciate all of them coming down to cover this game. You can get media around again, fans around again, big games. It's kind of how it's supposed to feel, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's the best. Uh, there's, there's a couple times uh, my emotions got the best of me mid-game. Uh, after Marcus's uh, Marcus's dunk, I kind of just blacked out and started screaming. And one of the shooters almost made a three in my face because I wasn't paying attention. Thank God he missed. But uh, it's like I, Coach Rice says it before every game. He's like just cherish these moments because uh, I remember when I was my first day on campus. And now luckily I got an extra year, fifth year. So just being back, it, it means the world to me. Down 14 in the first half. You're looking in that huddle. And Coach Rice mentioned it. A lot of older guys that you're looking at. You're looking at guys like you, classmates, fifth-year players, seniors. Down 14 against a good team. What do you say? What's the message in that huddle? Because the team seemed unfazed. Oh, the whole time, I was just saying, we're good. We are good. Um, you know, a lot, uh, as Coach Rice said, a lot of our guys were sick. Um, I wasn't feeling too hot either. But... Uh, to start the game, we just came out a little timid, half a half a step slower, and uh, I said we just got to chip away this first half, cut the lead a little bit, we'll be fine. And that's exactly what we did. We got in the we got in the locker room. I'm like everybody, heads up, we are, we are good. It's only seven. We've come back from worse. We've we've blew leads that were bigger. We are much better. We are we're gonna be just fine. And you know the second half we absolutely dominated. Um, I think they scored, uh, they had, what, 46? What, yeah, they, they only scored 18, 18 wow. 18 after halftime. And you did that quick math. I have a tablet in front of me. That was impressive. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's phenomenal defense. You let you let a team like Princeton score 46 in the first half and then only 18 in the second half. That's That just shows how, uh, that just, uh, just shows how good we are. Well, and, and go beyond those numbers within that 18 points, 24% shooting that Princeton had in the second half, just two of 12 from three. And we'll let you get out of here on this question. Uh, winning games different ways, winning from in front, winning from behind, 
being able to score a bunch, being able to get the stops that you need. What does a game like this tell you about your teammates? Uh, it's going to be one fun year. Uh, it's, I'm just so excited. Uh, the group we have is just we're just so together. We like each other, and everybody's got the same goal in mind, and we're just very excited for the future, especially Saturday. Well, enjoy this one, and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. George Pappas will exit. I'll wrap things up here on our extended postgame coverage. At one of three Mammoth players in double figures as George goes for 20, including four threes. 16 for the other guy that was up here with Coach Rice, Shavar Reynolds. Big 10 points for Sam Shapu, and then after that, it's balanced scoring for this Mammoth team. You get nine points and six rebounds from Miles Foster. Huge performance. You get nine points and six rebounds from Marcus McClary. Eight points for Walker Miller. Eight and seven for Walker. Balance. Defensive effort, intensity, this win kind of saw a little bit of everything for Monmouth as they win their fourth straight game to improve to 4-1 uh, on the year after 76-64 win. For everything you need, post-game recap, stats, it'll be all over our social media outlets as well as MonmouthHawks.com. Like George mentioned, we're back at it on Saturday at Cincinnati. We'll have live Monmouth Digital Network radio coverage right about 1.50 for the 2 o'clock start uh, in the Charm City. But I'll leave you with what George left us with. Great Bombeth win. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night.